Our story begins, like any good sewing story does, buying fabric at Joanne's. They had so many holiday-themed prints to choose from. Look how cute these happy kittens are! I was excited to get to choose one of these cute novelty prints for my project because most of the time with my historical sewing, I don't get to use these really cute, fun novelty prints. So I was super excited to visit this section in the Joanne store. To make my vintage holiday apron, I decided on this fabric here titled Sweater Plaid Red Holiday Cotton Fabric, which is an incredibly cumbersome but very descriptive name. To make this 1940s vintage apron, I will be using Simplicity Pattern 1221 titled 1940s Vintage Aprons, and I will be making option D. I really like the cute ruffle that is over the shoulder straps, and I just really like how much coverage that option had as well. I think they're all very cute, but option D is the one for me. This is the first time that I will be using any of the options in this pattern. So I have to spread out all of that tissue paper and then cut out the pattern itself. Here I am cutting out pattern piece number 17, which is the guide for the ruffle. I will be using pattern pieces 11 through 17 for this project. Now this project also calls for a pocket, which is pattern piece number 12, and I ended up cutting that out of the fabric, but then I ended up not doing the pocket because usually I just don't use pockets for aprons and it seemed difficult, so I just decided to not do a pocket. I got two and a half yards of this fabric, which is a smidge more than the pattern called for, but because there is a definite pattern to this and I'm going to attempt to do my best to match the pattern, I decided to get a smidge more than was called for. Also, this fabric was on sale as a doorbuster deal, so I got it uh, at about half off, which just makes me happy because I always love a good deal. Now, usually when I'm cutting out fabric, it calls to be laid out in the hot dog folded situation. But this time it is a hamburger folded situation, which worked very well for this garment. Uh, it was just different than I normally fold my fabric. After it was all laid out, it is then time to start cutting out those pattern pieces, which I did so as you can see here. I very much try to make the most use of my fabric. So here you can see I am, you know, trying to use every little scrub of fabric that I can to, you know, save those big pieces <laughs> for perhaps some other type of project or scrap project. Um, so here I'm, you know, trying to lay it out to, to use every, every bit of fabric that I possibly can. I'm cutting out the waistband now, which has a very fun point in the middle. And again, I'm trying to make the most of my fabric. Fa Laying out my pattern like this also saves on cutting. Lastly, I'm cutting out the skirt panels, the front skirt panel, and then the side skirt panels for the apron. Now that the cutting out phase is done, it is time for the pinning stage. So here I have my center skirt panel, which was cut on the fold, so it is nice and big. And then the side skirt panels, which were not cut on the fold, so there are two separate ones that go on either side of the center one, which was cut on the fold. And I'm going to pin them together so I can then go and sew them together. There is so much that goes into sewing that is not actually physically sewing. But now, now I sew. <laughs> And here I am sewing on my brother sewing machine. I did put my pins in the right way this time. I'm getting better at doing that. <laughs> a 
one of my sewing machines that I don't normally get a chance to use because of historical sewing, but it's such a fantastic way to finish seams is a serger. So here I am serging those seams that I just sewed on my sewing machine to finish them off nicely. Now I am going to pin the bib of my apron to the waistband, which was a little tricky because of the whole point that is in the middle, which I think is super cute, but you just have to, to you know, coax the fabric in the right way, which is a bit hard while pinning. It's a little easier while sewing, but you really got to talk to the fabric when you're doing a point like that and see how the fabric wants to respond and move also ironing ironing helps a lot steaming it out get a spray water bottle in there helps that fabric relax and, and form that point <laughs> so now i have sewed both bibs to my waistbands and now i'm going to pin them together now i don't think that this is how the sewing instructions told you how to do this but i don't like listening to the sewing instructions because sometimes i think the way i do it makes more sense and that's what i'm doing here so <laughs> I'm hitting my bibs and my waistbands together after I sewed them together. Uh, and now I'm going to sew them together front to back, pretty sides together to create uh, a nice finish seams. Now might be a great time to mention that I do indeed have a Ko-fi. You can find the link down in my description box. And if you are enjoying this video and would like to, you know, buy me a coffee or leave a little tip, I absolutely greatly appreciate it, especially at this time of year. Now that the front and back of those waistbands and bibs have been sewn together, it's time to trim those corners so that they'll turn out really pretty when we right side it out, which I am doing here. Not a great job of, but now we have to go back and poke those corners out. And then, ooh, yeah, we're going to have to press that because uh, it's not laying very nicely. Now is it? But I like to do all my pressing at once and all of my sewing at once. It kind of goes in a bundle situation that way. I'm not just constantly going back and forth and back and forth. So here is the skirt of the apron. And I am actually putting in a running gathering stitch with my machine. The tension's like as low as it'll go. It's on a five. And I'm going to do that running stitch all around there so that I can gather it and put it onto the waistband. Now I'm marking on the waistband after I pressed it where it should go. And then I'm going to just pull that thread that I used on that running stitch with my machine and just gather it all up there. there. When gathering like this, I always like to gather as tight as it will go. And then I kind of go back and spread out the gathers evenly across the space that, well, the gathers need to fill. So in this case, it's from pin to pin along this very long waistband. That's, you know, actually how long my waist is and then the rest will be the, the waistband that, you know, ties the pretty bow in the back. Uh, again, I don't think that this is exactly how the simplicity pattern said to do this, but I really liked how this turned out. So let me tell you how I did that. As you just saw, I sewed the bib to the waistband turned it inside out, and then I pressed uh, about like a half inch on either side of the waistband um, so that I can then just fold it over and I can sandwich my gathered skirt into that waistband and then I'm top stitching it down. So everything will be super nice and super clean. This project, I was really focusing on finishing techniques, which I am not always the best about doing but I wanted to get better at and so therefore on this project I'm like okay it's a, an apron usually that's that's pretty simple but how can I make this a learning progress uh, learning process and make progress for me and for that it was really paying attention to finishing techniques um, which I, I did here shout out to my friend Kara for sending me like two rolls of this beautiful eyelet trim this is what I will be using for the ruffle portion of my apron and as you can see, I'm really using the guide pattern piece as a, as a guide. It is as long 
as the guide piece, but I am not actually, it's not the same width in the middle, but that's okay. My ruffle is just going to be a little bit smaller, but I still trimmed it on the end so that it still has that graduated ruffle feel that I want on the apron. I just did a gathering stitch all the way along the rough side of my eyelet trim, and now I'm gathering it to fit into my shoulder strap. Just like when gathering the skirt, I gather as tight as I can and then I go back and kind of spread out the ruffles so that the ruffles are even, so the gathers are even while doing this ruffle. I then gathered it to the right correct length, made sure that they were even, and then I decided to sandwich that ruffle in between the front and the back of the shoulder strap therefore making a very finished edge. Again, I'm not sure if this is how the simplicity pattern said to do it, but I really liked how it turned out for my apron. So if you are, you know, using the simplicity pattern and you don't like the way that the instructions say to do things, you know, I here I am giving you permission to make up your own rules about how you would like to sew things. And if you would like to follow my method, you are absolutely welcome to do so. I really wanted to make sure that my ruffle laid just how I wanted it. So here I am pressing it flat and just like I did with the waistband, I am pressing about a half inch of each side of the shoulder strap down and then folding it over and top stitching it to create a very nice finished edge on the inside of the shoulder straps. It was then time to attach the shoulder straps to the rest of the apron and really, uh, it, the shoulder straps with the ruffle, it really, it just makes the apron. It made me so happy. Now, because I had made such nice finished edges on, well, basically everything so far, I decided that I was actually just going to top stitch the bib to the shoulder straps and I could line up the, the pattern super super perfect because I was just going to top stitch it and I like how it turned out a lot. It was easy, it was pretty, it was easier to pattern match, highly recommend. Now is a great time to chat about what we're doing for the holidays, folks. So drop down in the comments what you are planning to do for this holiday season. If you have any fun winter traditions that you like to do or want to start, let me know. I would love to hear about them. For me, I will be celebrating Christmas by going to my fiance's families. Now just for the finishing touches, I am going to do a double turned hem along the bottom of the skirt of the apron. Also along the sides. I also had to hem the sides of the apron too. Can't forget about the sides. They're very important. Then all that was left was to attach the shoulder straps to the back of the waistband in this fun crisscross pattern and then my apron was going to be done <laughs> the apron was a little harder to get on than i thought because of the whole crisscross shoulder strap thing going on in the back and <laughs> it was a little tighter to get around my head because of, of the way that i had it uh, and it kind of sadly 
crushed my victory wave, but that's okay. I just <laughs> took it out. For my holiday work party, I decided to make some cinnamon rolls. Now these are Pillsbury cinnamon rolls, so I just basically opened a can and stuck them on a tray. But did you know that Pillsbury, the company, has been around since 1869? So they would have been around in the 40s. Therefore, I would like to think that my cinnamon rolls are authentic. Of course you have to put frosting on cinnamon rolls, otherwise that's just an abomination. If I may say so myself, I think they look very good. <laughs> I also think my apron looks really good and it's just the perfect Christmas apron for myself to do all of my holiday baking. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a happy holiday season and a fantastic new year.